So weekend one of the beta passed, weekend two starts tomorrow. And while we gear up for the full experience of what the beta will have to offer, I want to take a little bit of time today and talk about this gamble that this year is bringing to the table with Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and everything in between. I want to expand upon a thought that I first had while recording my initial impressions video last week after COD Next, coming fresh off my first gameplay of Modern Warfare 2, where Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 have all the bones, but will it fly too close to the sun? As we go along, drop your thoughts down below. Are you looking forward to anything in particular, either out of the upcoming beta weekend here where all platforms can play, anything you're looking forward to with the full release, whatever the case, drop your thoughts. But if you enjoy the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all things Modern Warfare 2. We're on that road to half a million subscribers, so if you guys would like to stay on top of everything while joining that community, I'd love to have you. And finally, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for the best blue light glasses on the market, but more on them later on. For now, let's talk about this gamble that Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone looks to be taking. So let's first set the stage here for the year ahead. We don't know specifics about like launch map counts, mode counts, grind worthy content counts, weapon counts, or anything like that for Modern Warfare 2 and that mainline experience. But at a glance, this year on paper has potential to be the biggest and most in depth year of COD we've seen at face value. This year kind of seems to have a little bit of everything for everybody 6v6 traditional multiplayer for the multiplayer experience, ground war being added in for that larger scale combat, probably going to be competing a little bit with Battlefield players once again here as they did in Modern Warfare 2019, trying to steal a little bit of that market away. Warzone for the Battle Royale and Warzone players, and then DMZ maybe picking up some more market cap in terms of the looter and extraction subgenre, comparable to, say, Tarkov players, bringing them over to the Call of Duty experience. And I guess you could throw Spec Ops 2 in there for those who want classic Spec Ops. So... I don't think that we've really seen anything quite like that in regards to trying to expand that market share or rather market dominance and the potential there before in any other Call of Duty prior. And all of this, of course, on top of a traditional campaign that will be getting. I don't really want to include that in sort of the mainline discussion here of this. These other modes more so being a lot more replayable. Granted, some people do play Call of Duty campaigns more than once. Myself, I did it quite a few times with Modern Warfare 2019 and even to a degree in Black Ops Cold War around launch, I had more time in campaign playing all the end a couple of times over compared to Cold War's MP where there was only like five to six 6v6 maps in traditional MP. Now for a lot of people though it's a one and done if you play it even at all but all that considered you get a little bit of everything when you look at it that way and again that's at face value. I have absolutely no idea the reception of these modes come full launch maybe MP flounders maybe Warzone 2 doesn't correct course but on paper this is the most major modes we've ever seen listed with a ship of a game and shortly thereafter. So what's the gamble? Truthfully, I think there's a more minor gamble and a larger one to discuss here. The more smaller scale one is kind of compounding off of what we talked about yesterday. MP in that traditional 6v6 experience, the lesser of the two. We won't stay on this one too long, and we already kind of talked about it, so don't want to beat a dead horse. The only inherent gamble that I see is Infinity War doubling down on certain design elements. The loss on that gamble would be to push away a segment of the community. Now, I've already said my piece in yesterday's video on Twitter elsewhere. I think that some of the doubling down is kind of illogical and nullifies the value of certain attachments and or perks in game between that minimap and things like Dead Silence, and I'm sure that plenty disagree. That's okay. It's something that I'll have to adjust to. Absolutely. I'm not that guy that's going to be like, this is game-breaking. I can't play without it because it's not the case. I did just fine in Modern Warfare 2019. I'll do just fine in Modern Warfare 2. It's just a matter of which systems I'd prefer in terms of design. I get it. The game's not catered to me. For every one of me who wants similar design decisions, I'm sure there's probably 10 to 100 weekend gamers out there that don't. I just don't find some of the logic in the discussed reasoning that they brought up as of yesterday in that blog post. But the bigger gamble to me comes down to Warzone. Now, my thoughts on this still stay 100% to what we mentioned back last week. In my initial review video, it was one of those things that you kind of say in passing, but when you look back on it, you're like, okay, yeah, that, that actually does make sense. I said that it seemed like Warzone 2 was trying to build up DMZ too much, that it was kind of being built off of DMZ rather than the other way around, rather than being two separate experiences. And fundamentally speaking, looking at this new experience of Warzone, the gameplay loop that we saw at COD Next and that first showcase of it, fundamentally, that was not a bad battle royale game. Point blank, it's not a bad battle royale from what we saw and what we played. The issue that I see is that it's not a Warzone experience. The mode had a different identity than what we expect for a Warzone experience. No loadouts, major gulag changes, different looting mechanics. It's going to be a hell of a battle royale experience, but it lacked that identity to differentiate between something like PUBG or your standard battle royale elsewhere. When I looked at that game and compared it to others out there, what made it unique in that build? I mean, maybe that triple storm split? 
maybe that's if we're being generous but it stripped that unique identity of warzone away the original arma mods minecraft hunger game custom games h1z1 PUBG, those original battle royales on the market of the last 10 years or so set up the genre but games like fortnite added a unique element for building apex has its special abilities fall guys is just that fun party game that you don't really have to care about and it's just laughs the entire way but then there's dozens of other battle royale games that have those unique experiences hyperscape realm royale super people and so on warzone's unique element was undoubtedly that loadout system then things like the gulag and with one build to the next it essentially wiped out half of that uniqueness off the map again not fundamentally bad to the gameplay loop but just weird to see what made it so successful and unique quickly tossed to the side to me, it did and still does feel like Warzone is being built off of DMZ, not the other way around, or not trying to make each unique gameplay loops. And honestly, looking back, this kind of makes sense from some rumors that we saw, where DMZ was apparently meant to be in Modern Warfare 2019, but the development was off and on between then, didn't make the cut, and then it's been since expanded upon for this game and beyond. So maybe it was even the original blueprint for the original Warzone. When you look at it, the overabundance of AI, looting mechanics, the loot locations and where you can find stuff, crates, strongholds with those AI locations, cash and cash registers, looting on shelves, and then other things like vehicle play with damage, gas, and repair abilities. All of that is geared towards the looter aspect of the game, trying to survive and then perhaps extract like you would see in Tarkov, this mode being akin to Tarkov at its base. But for Warzone, that slows the gameplay down tremendously and alters that basic gameplay loop of, again, Warzone. Not a battle royale, but Warzone. To me, when I think about it, it seems like they're the same mode, but only diverging then at the end points. You both drop in, loot up, try to survive, but then end game, you have a fork in the road. In one mode, you end up trying to extract with all your loot. The other, you're trying to be the last man or team standing. But it's that lack of distinguishing gameplay loop between the two up until that point that has the potential to hurt it, in my opinion. So why is this worrying? Well, because we've kind of seen one gameplay loop already hinder or potentially even hurt the ecosystem of another beforehand. Modern Warfare 2019, I'm sure that plenty still remember this because it's still something that you see happen in Vanguard and Black Ops Cold War the last two years, where Warzone definitely took that priority. For Warzone players, it was great. Obviously, you had a lot of support, you had a lot of prioritization in the gameplay loop, but for multiplayer, you kind of sacrifice some of the gameplay systems at a fundamental level in Modern Warfare 2019, things like Dead Silence. I truly still think that Dead Silence was a field upgrade, not a perk, because you could not have a perk of Dead Silence in Warzone. Now, why it's still like that, I have no idea, because back in 2019, Warzone and Modern Warfare 2019 shared the same application, so you could not sort of pair those out and differentiate the two if it's a fundamental system in play. Now, that's a different question. But then, coming back to it, the fundamentals of Warzone have that potential to be, I don't know if the word neglected is the right word for it, where DMZ would then take priority. So, you have this massively successful mode where, if it's being built around DMZ instead of just taking the successful blueprint you had and going forward with it and then building DMZ off of that, if DMZ flounders or flops, well, then you have the potential to hurt not only just one game mode, but two. And then also, if that's something that likely isn't by extension going to affect Modern Warfare 2 too much in that multiplayer experience, but if it does somehow say that entire house of cards could end up falling. Oppositely, though, I do think, honestly, that if done well, DMZ could absolutely take off like Warzone did. Granted, Tarkov and that looter shooter subgenre is a bit more niche than Warzone in the battle royale genre, but I do think that the massive name that is Call of Duty, no barrier of entry of free to play, and associating it with Warzone 2, there's absolutely the potential that it could take off. So maybe Warzone doesn't do so hot, but DMZ does. For me, I just hope you're not sacrificing gameplay too much for a different mode. In regards to Warzone, even if it does, yes, there will be a large audience. It's free to play. It's one of the biggest names and now IPs in the world, but that mainstream spotlight might not be there as much if there isn't that unique identity like there was before. Now, in a perfect world, I'd love to see the multiplayer experience that would make everybody happy, a ground war experience for those that love larger scale combat, but don't want to play something like BR or Plunder, a Warzone experience that just takes what we had over the last few years and expands upon it. And really, as we've talked about, I think that you can rectify some of these major changes relatively easy. Add in a loadout system, but also still have the ability to buy individual weapons like you see in the buy station now. Adjust looting slightly, tone back the AI a bit, and I think they do a great job in terms of differentiating from DMZ and Warzone. And as for that DMZ, experience that could be its own unique thing and as such of course 
four gameplay loops, four different types of gamers, none of them hindering or harming any of the other gameplay ecosystems. Again, genuinely, I think this is the year that we've had the most potential, but it really comes down to execution as it always does. So I guess we'll see. A gamble that could absolutely pay off for Warzone 2 and Modern Warfare 2 here upcoming or something that might make that house of cards topple. So that's where I'm gonna turn it over to you. I'd love to get your thoughts on all of this. What do you think is gonna happen? Before we wrap everything up though, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage. I've been talking about them for a year and a half now at this point, and I will still swear by them. Again, the YouTube creator lifestyle is not as glamorous or anything like that. Instead of out partying every night, I'm just sitting at my desk every day for eight to 10 to 12 hours a day, noting, scripting, editing, grabbing gameplay and recording for videos and stuff like that. So I'm looking at a monitor constantly. If you guys are doing even half of that, you may have already experienced the effects of blue light in your life. Now, I've had trouble combating this in the past. I've used just basic pairs off Amazon, and I'll tell you, man, none of them compare to Gamer Advantage. They are head and shoulders the best out there on the market. I'd even go so far as to saying that Gamer Advantage is the advantage of espresso here or my daily productivity. They're comfortable, durable, and lightweight frames make them a great choice for all day use, and their lenses are clinically proven. Now, I can't do a great job of conveying the science behind it. If you guys would like to learn more, check the link in the description below, and if you ever want to pick anything up, use code espresso for 10% off your entire order. But that said, that's what we're going to call it. So again, drop your thoughts below. What do you guys think? But if you enjoyed the video, you found it Alan Seifel, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and anything COD related. We're on that road to half a million subscribers. So I'd love to have you in the community. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.